federal government just stop putting money into new roads? Here, in Canada, the second biggest landmass in the world. Well, that's what the environment minister literally said at an event this week. In the heart of the Great White North, a silent pitfall lurks beneath the surface, threatening the very foundation of Canada's prosperity. It's not a creature of myth or legend, but a crisis of neglect and decay, the looming specter of failing infrastructure. Canada is starting to face an infrastructure deficit in trillions of dollars. As the population grows exponentially and urban centers expand, the strain on its infrastructure becomes increasingly evident. Roads once hailed as engineering marvels now resemble obstacle courses riddled with potholes and cracks. Bridges that once symbolized progress now stand as precarious reminders of neglect, their steel skeletons rusting away under the weight of time. In major immigrant receiving cities like Toronto and Vancouver, aging infrastructure struggles have gone from scary to terrifying. The Ontario government estimates it faces a $33 billion subway repair backlog. The city's state of road repair backlog is projected to shoot up from $10.6 billion to $22.7 billion by 2033. Meanwhile, British Columbia's auditors highlighted over $7 billion in deferred maintenance for transportation infrastructure as of 2020. At the same time, Canada spends less on infrastructure than other developed nations as a percentage of GDP. According to the OECD, the Canadian national infrastructure investment in 2021 was 3.5% of GDP versus an average of 3.8% across OECD countries. According to Statistics Canada, the cost to replace all assets rated in in poor or very poor condition was estimated at just over 10% of the total replacement value at $264.7 billion or $16,252 per private dwelling in Canada. Road infrastructure comprised 48.1% of the infrastructure in dire conditions and greatly needed rehabilitation or replacement, followed by wastewater infrastructure at 13.9% and potable water infrastructure at 11.1%. The clock is ticking and the stakes couldn't be higher. In this video, we'll bring to light how much Canadian infrastructure is beginning to buckle and crumble under the weight of neglect and how the arteries of commerce upon which Canada is built are choked with congestion and decay. As you traverse the highways and byways of Canadian metropolises, you can't help but feel the palpable tension in the air. Gridlock and endless traffic lines are the new normal as motorists inch along at a snail's pace, their frustration mounting with each passing minute. Decades of chronic underinvestment from all levels of government have left Canadian transit systems struggling. Infrastructure assets are being strained and pushed over capacity due to the driving expansion of cities. A 2021 report by the Canadian Centre for Economic analysis warned that traffic congestion in the Toronto area costs the city up to $11 billion annually without significant new investments. A new study confirms what many of us already know. Toronto is among the worst in the world when it comes to congestion on the roads. In Vancouver, TransLink projected in 2019 that upgrading the regional transit system to meet demand from population growth would require over $23 billion in investments over the next three decades. These pressures have raised concerns from leaders like Environmental Minister Stephen Gilbao, who stated in March 2022, unless we look at ways to start streamlining immigration in major cities, we'll find ourselves in an unlivable situation with overcrowded transit and roads. In a horrible twist of events, the faith of Canadians went on a downward spiral after some controversial remarks were made by the minister earlier this year. He said, our government has made the decision to stop investing in new road infrastructure. There will be no more envelopes from the federal government to enlarge the road network. Network. Such remarks tore the veil and subliminally espoused the alleged lack of interest by the federal government to bolster transportation networks around the country. As concerns mount, citizens and industry leaders alike are beginning to question the government's commitment to addressing the pressing needs of Canada's transportation network. The consequences of this negligence by the government are too dire to ignore. Without adequate investment in infrastructure, Canada's economy will suffer with productivity stifled and business 
business is hamstrung by unreliable transportation networks. The very foundation of Canada's prosperity is at risk as investors look elsewhere for opportunities in countries with more robust infrastructure. With roads and transit systems already strained to their limits, the prospect of halting investment in new infrastructure projects can only serve to exacerbate existing challenges, sending Canada deeper into its rabbit hole. The challenges extend beyond just urban transit. The Canadian population is growing at one of the speediest rates globally, with population growth accelerating to 3.2% over the past year. Such exponential growth has translated into greater demand for imported goods and trade volumes through major Canadian ports. However, the critical question remains, to what extent are these port facilities functioning effectively? The Port of Vancouver has been ranked among the worst ports in the world, and anyone around the waterfront can likely guess why. Managed by the Vancouver Fraser Port Authority, this port handles almost 20% of Canada's total trade. Issues like road and rail bottlenecks leading to and from marine terminals have been flagged as major challenges. In its 2022 annual report, the Port Authority warned that without infrastructure upgrades, forecastable trade growth cannot be accommodated in a reliable, efficient, and environmentally responsible way. Similarly, the Montreal Port Authority projects need over $1.2 billion in infrastructure investments through 2027 to handle anticipated cargo growth based on population forecasts. This includes increasing terminal capacity, road rail access, and equipment to move goods faster. Transport Canada's own assessment found that by 2026, road and rail infrastructure serving ports like Vancouver and Montreal may face increasing bottlenecks and congestion due to inadequate capacity. Concerns have also been raised about potential bottlenecks at border crossings and last-mile freight transportation routes, distributing imported goods to consumers in major urban centers experiencing rapid population expansion. A 2021 Senate report warned that without investments in trade-enabling infrastructure aligned to population growth projections driven heavily by immigration, Canada risks missing the boat on economic opportunities while facing higher congestion costs. The Ottawa government has focused on shovel-ready projects. This funding system may not be the best for ensuring infrastructure investments are made in the most fiscally responsible manner. A 2023 Federation of Canadian Municipalities report highlighted a $600 billion funding gap in infrastructure needed to build 5.8 million habitable infrastructures by 2030. There is no saying how much of the Pandora's box the Canadian government has opened to innocent citizens and how catastrophic the consequences will be. Public services around the country are also feeling the strain of failing infrastructure. Hospitals are struggling to cope with increased patient volumes due to accidents on poorly maintained roads or just poor hospital facilities. Many healthcare facilities are simply bursting at the seams, stuck between a rock and a hard place as they can't keep pace with escalating demands. According to eye-popping data from Healthcare Can, over one-fifth of Canadian hospitals are effectively laughingstocks, crumbling, dilapidated facilities in desperate need of being put out to pasture. The report estimates a whopping $53 billion price tag just to stop the bleeding from these ramshackle money pits and get them back into working condition. As delineated by the report, the lack of investment in preventative health and the general lack of investment in healthcare facilities accounts for the top problems facing healthcare in Canada. In Ontario, the situation is going from bad to worse at a breathtaking rate. Despite the province admitting to a $27 billion funding black hole to expand overstuffed hospitals by over 3,100 beds. The Ontario Hospital Association revealed this barely scratches the surface. They found half of the province's hospital infrastructure is obsolete, basically one foot in the grave waiting for last rites. According to Global News, roughly a quarter of Ontario hospitals are in poor condition and require significant investment to meet current standards. For five unidentified hospitals in the region, the report says it would be more cost-effective to completely replace them, and 26% of the 237 healthcare buildings assessed in the province are in poor condition. It's a similar house of horrors in British Columbia, where provincial auditors sounded the alarm that most health authorities simply lack the hospital beds to catch the rising population tsunami. High-growth areas like Fraser Health are hundreds of beds short, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Across the country, the Canadian Institute for Health Information projects Canada is careening towards a shortfall of over 21,000 hospital beds
beds by 2030 if the system doesn't get a massive transfusion of funds for capacity expansions. And that's just the tip of the iceberg based on anticipated population trajectories turbocharged by immigration levels. The challenges cut to the bone. Bottleneck funding has left the system in triage, with 60% of Ontario's hospitals as decrepit relics, over half a century old and struggling to integrate modern technologies. It's putting the system behind the eight ball in a vicious cycle as these dilapidated money pits burn cash on mounting maintenance backlogs. For the Canadian government, failure to shake the system out of this infrastructure straitjacket will reduce Canada's health care to life support in a flatlining crisis. Compared to countries like China and her administrative region of Hong Kong, where the MTR railway operation system has been touted as one of, if not the most reliable, efficient, safe, customer-friendly, and cost-effective railway system in the world, the Canadian metro story is a far cry. Despite the country's ginormous landmass, only three Canadian cities offer commuter train services. Montreal via EXO, Toronto via GO Transit, and the Vancouver region via West Coast Express, with only the Toronto system offering an extensive streetcar or tram system. With just three cities to cater to, the country's railway infrastructure is still miles below par. The crumbling state of passenger and freight rail networks leaves many Canadians feeling they have little choice but to get behind the wheel despite the heavy costs. The alarm bells are ringing, loudest in major urban centers grappling with booming populations. For instance, the Ontario government estimates it faces a jaw-dropping billions of dollars worth of repair backlog just for GO Transit rail infrastructure serving the Greater Toronto Area as of 2022. Decades of underinvestment have left tracks, signals, and equipment extremely outdated and increasingly unfit. In recent reports, funding of $4.3 million is required to support the Toronto Transit Commission's aging fleet and infrastructure maintenance needs. According to the report, it now totals $47.8 billion, of which $35.5 billion still needs to be funded. It's a similar story for the nation's core freight rail arteries. A 2021 study by the Asia-Pacific Foundation of Canada found over 60% of rail corridor infrastructure in Vancouver will require major renewals costing billions over the next two decades. With ports already facing bottlenecks, the pressures will only intensify as populations and trade volumes continue surging. For Canadian households, these festering rail woes increasingly push them towards personal vehicles when transit is plagued by delays, cancellations, and capacity constraints unaligned with population realities. Despite skyrocketing costs for gas, insurance, maintenance, and repairs, cars become the more reliable option in the face of dilapidated public infrastructure. Rate Hub's latest data shows that the average Canadian household spends over $16,644 on vehicle operating and ownership costs costs, over 20% of the typical household's pre-tax income. Mechanics have been rubbing their hands with glee as repair shops get busier, raking over $4 billion annually on Canadian drivers' labor costs. For lower-income families, these expenses can quickly become a financial guardrail. Yet the lure of personal transportation remains undeniable for Canadians weary of a crumbling rail network stuttering to serve rising populations and densification. While improving public transit is touted as an environmental environmental and cost-saving solution. The reality is record car sales and domestic road freight due to poor rail alternatives. From the dizzying repair backlogs for critical rail arteries to ongoing capacity constraints for road repairs and hospital infrastructure refurbishment, Canada is increasingly a nation pushing its long-suffering population into the loving embrace of a hardship despite the costs, caused by sheer negligence and oversight by its current administration. If you like this video, hit the like button and help us spread the word. And don't forget to subscribe to get notifications on our latest news and analysis. In the meantime, check out one of these videos here to learn more. Thanks for watching.